Today I want to talk about cell transport. This diagram shows a simplified model of a cell. The uh, watery environment on the inside and the outside of the cell cannot uh, usually penetrate uh, the cell membrane itself so easily. So you have a number of components of the cell membrane, these transport proteins, that are specific for certain materials that allow them to go in and out of the membrane as need be. We know a little bit about the cell membrane, that it is mostly lipid, but there are two layers. This bilayer of lipids uh, has a, a number of components like the hydrophilic head, which interact with water on the inside and the outside of the cell, and these hydrophobic tails, which interact only with each other. These lipids are uh, therefore, uh, they have two regions, one polar, one nonpolar, and it prevents uh, some materials from getting into the cell so easily. There are a number of other components of the cell membrane, including lipids uh, and proteins and carbohydrates. Other lipids include cholesterol. Uh, there are a number of proteins, these giant molecules stuck in the cell membrane, and carbohydrates, these uh, branching structures on the outside that uh, function in cell recognition and certain other functions. Mostly lipids, up to 80% in some cells, most of the rest being proteins, proteins that have a number of functions, including as enzymes, as well as transport. This model is referred to as a fluid mosaic model, fluid in that it is lipids, that these molecules embedded in the membrane can kind of float around in this, uh, this lipid layer, and a mosaic because it contains a number of components all tiled together to create the entire structure of the membrane itself. When we say selectively permeable, we mean it functions kind of like a screen door does, that certain materials, usually smaller ones, can get through the membrane relatively easily, but larger ones have a problem getting through uh, the membrane itself. There are uh, some problems that uh, charged particles have as well because the uh, hydrophobic part, the uh, long uh, lipid tails of these uh, membrane lipids actually repel the charged particles and prevent them from coming through, hence selectively permeable. Selectively permeable implying that certain materials can get into the cell and others cannot. Materials tend to move from where there's a lot of them to spread out to where there's fewer of them. For example, from inside to the outside. There's almost a chemical driving force that causes the movement of these materials in uh, the second example from outside to inside across the cell membrane. Cell transport involves materials moving across the cell membrane itself. Just as water moves downhill, materials tend to move from high to low concentration. This movement is referred to as diffusion. We know uh, many examples of diffusion in our day-to-day -day lives. For example, if you put, uh, let's say, a dye, a lump of dye at the top layer of water, these molecules diffuse from high to low concentration. They spread out and take up the entire space that is available to them. That if we look at a cell membrane, if you start with a certain molecule on high, in high concentration on one side of the membrane, what happens is that over time these molecules tend to diffuse across the membrane until equilibrium is reached. It should be noted that at equilibrium, when both sides of the membrane have an equal concentration of these molecules, these molecules never stop moving, they keep moving to both sides, but overall the same number go from one side to the other as come from the other side back. This kind of movement from high to low concentration does not actually require energy at all. Hence, it is referred to as a type of passive transport. There are two types of passive transport, like simple diffusion, where certain molecules can just go straight across the membrane by themselves. But sometimes if they do have trouble, let's say if they are charged or if they are very large, that there are proteins embedded in the membrane that serve as channels or gates to allow these materials to move in or out of the cell along their concentration gradient from high to low concentration. These proteins tend to be very specific, that there might be, let's say, materials uh, that, uh, like glucose, are very large molecules made of tens or hundreds or thousands of atoms that require large proteins to move them out. You may also have transport proteins specific for amino acids or certain ions. Each of these proteins, therefore, is specific for transporting one type of substance. Water, too, 
is an example of a, of a molecule that is required in large quantities by cells and cells uh, expend special energy in bringing it in. Sometimes this molecule can have trouble getting across the membrane in large enough quantities. So cells have these special proteins called aquaporins that function to only bring in water, therefore making this an example of facilitated diffusion. That is diffusion that is helped along by a protein that is embedded in the cell membrane. On the other side, if you want to, let's say, transport uh, molecules from low to high concentration, effectively up the concentration gradient, it's kind of like making water move uphill, that you have to expend energy to make it do so. Uh, this uh, energy is expended in the form of a molecule called ATP. This ATP is the energy currency of the cell, that you burn one ATP to carry out a small action. In this case, you're trying to move this uh, particular molecule from low to high concentration, from where there's very few of these molecules to where there's uh, already a lot of them. Uh, this uh, Normally, these molecules would tend to move the other way, but the cell is expending energy to move them against their concentration gradient from low to high concentration. What we see here is a nice summary of the differences between these two types of transport, between passive transport and active transport. Passive transport, the movement of molecules from high to low concentration, sometimes can be simple, that is, these molecules move straight across the membrane by themselves, or they can be helped. This diffusion can be facilitated by proteins embedded in the membrane. On the other side, active transport is a movement of molecules from low to high concentration against their concentration gradient, which requires energy in the form of ATP. So, in summary, the cell membrane is selectively permeable. There are a number of components of the cell membrane, uh, including lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. These proteins can help in moving materials across the membrane if they have uh, trouble doing so by themselves. That passive transport is the movement of molecules uh, along their concentration gradient from high to low concentration. This does not require energy and includes a couple of types, including simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion, facilitated uh, by proteins in the membrane. Active transport, on the other hand, is a movement of molecules from low to high concentration, which requires ATP, energy, to carry out this task of making molecules move against their concentration gradient.